I'm David Crossett, founder of RV Masters, and this video is part of my Buyer's Track video series, all about buying an RV. If you like it, there's a lot more information in the video series, so consider purchasing that at rvmasters.com. We all know that when we walk into a sales environment, we're going to be asked, can I help you find something? And what do we normally say? No, I'm just looking. That might work when you're clothes shopping or wandering a toy store, but here's the crazy thing. You don't just wander around an RV dealership randomly. You have to make a decision to walk into that dealership or to go to a show. You're there for a reason. Something brought you there. So why play coy about your intentions? Now people sometimes think that there's an advantage to being a stealth buyer, hiding from the salesperson or you know, blurting out randomly, oh, we're two years out. Um, you would not believe the silly things that people say when they're trying to duck a salesperson. Why are you scared to tell the salesperson that you're going to buy an RV that weekend? It's not like they're gonna try harder to sell you. They're already trying hard. You're not protecting yourself or staying under the radar or avoiding the magical spell of the salesperson that he was just waiting to put on you as soon as he knew that you were a buyer. Again, I personally do not believe that there's any advantage to being a stealth shopper. I believe the salesperson can help you if you know the game and you know what you're talking about. So many people fear the salesperson and they just don't need to. They are the gateway to the product. Now here's something you've probably never thought about. When you are a consumer, and especially when shopping for RVs, you are also in sales. You need to represent yourself to the salesperson and get them emotional. You want them wanting the deal. You want them liking you and wanting to help you. You want them anxiously awaiting for your phone call um, and pushing the manager to accept a better deal or to throw something in to sweeten the deal. The salesperson really does have influence over that stuff. They can help you if they like you and believe you. You want them emotional and unbalanced and hanging on your every word. You want them to like you and believe you. That way, they're more inclined to help you. Many people think that they can treat salespeople like crap, uh, thinking that they have all the power as the consumer. This may be true in some cases or for some salespeople, but let me tell you what I see, um, at least in the places that I'm familiar with. If you piss off the salesperson, they still might try to sell you, but they're gonna hit you in places that you don't know about. They might add freight and prep, or they might even take the existing freight and prep and bump up the fees. Uh, you know, they might have been able to discount something, uh, maybe some hitch work, but now they're not. Uh, you know, they might give you a $50 gift card or, or uh, the $50 gift card they normally give customers, they might not give to you and you wouldn't know the difference anyway. You know, since you're being a jerk, they're just gonna keep it and not say anything about it. They have their ways to not help you save money. They are your advocate through the whole sales process, um, through the finance process, service, to the sales manager, delivery, everything. You are hurting yourself when you try to be a jerk to a salesperson. The techniques and the information that I teach you through the buyer's track is not to be a jerk to the salesperson or to try to screw them over. I want it to be a fair fight. They have been trained, they do this every day, and they have information that you don't. I'm just trying to level the playing field. I want you to be able to arm wrestle fairly and honestly and get the best deal possible. You don't have to be a jerk or to live in fear to do that. So again, in my opinion, don't play the I'm just looking game if you are a buyer. If you're interested, say so. Tell them what you're looking for um, and what you need them to do to earn your business, and they will. I also want to make you aware of something else that you might not know. Um, sometimes people way overestimate uh, what salespeople are making on an RV sale. You would be surprised how low it really is compared to what we think it is. Uh, salespeople need volume to make a living. So if you're holding back thinking that your $50,000 is going to make the salesperson jump hoops and do cartwheels for you, you know, think again. Um, that sale only means a few hundred dollars to him, um, and he'll make just as much money on that or more selling a used RV for $10,000. Remember what we talked about, um, used RVs and the values uh, that are in the, those used RVs. You know, so you're not that important to him. So don't overplay your hand. What you need to consider is how much is the salesperson's ego worth to him? And for a $200 commission, their ego might not be worth dealing with your crap. 
you piss him off and he's gonna broom you. So be careful thinking that you have all the power over the salesperson because of how much money you're going to spend. In many, many cases, the moment the sale is over, they've already forgotten about you because they need the next sale. They need volume to make a living. The follow-up after the sale doesn't mean a whole lot. It's not like you're gonna return and buy another RV right away or that you can return that v, uh, RV. Um, and so, you know, for many salespeople, there's limited value after the sale. Now, of course, I know that there are salespeople that are very relationship driven. I know them personally. They care about post-sales service and repeat business. And if you find one like that, stick with them. Uh, I mean, him or her, they're awesome. They will take care of you. Um, and so just know what I'm saying and kind of beating up on the salespeople in a little bit of a way is not true across the board. They don't all act like this. I did a quick YouTube video from the Hershey Show this year, 2018, uh, but I'm gonna cover the two points that were in that video. I'm gonna cover them here again as well as add to them. So first, uh, dealers play the MSRP game.